We are excited to celebrate the Persian Yay. New Year here, Netta. <laughs> Very excited. It's going to be officially tomorrow morning. Yep. Uh, but yeah, we're going to preview it, let you know about some of our Persian traditions. And it so always starts the share. first day of spring, right? It does. Oh, yes, it all yes. coincides with the season change. Uh, so it's an exciting time for a lot of families yes. in our area, of course. And exciting too, because I know there's some treats in the studio mm -hmm. we get to nibble on. Oh, so yeah. look forward to that. <laughs> Let's check in with Evan as we approach spring, the last day of fall here. And you know what? I'm okay putting uh, the each season behind us here as we move <laughs> along here out of the pandemic. Especially <laughs> considering spring. I, I think spring is probably my favorite season yeah. of all four. It's just a fun time. Netta, what was the snap? Netta was shooting something yeah. uh, for today, and uh, I did steal one of the cookies. That Which one was, did you have? It was the like it was nozzle, it was maybe? sweet and it was like kind of nutty and what is it? <laughs> no, <laughs> with pistachios on it. Yes, it is a form of that. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> what's it called? I don't know which one. Okay, I we'll figure know. it out. Yeah. <laughs> but the, hey, all I know is that whatever Netta had laid out here looked great. So <laughs> that's going to be fun to see. Uh, take a look at what's going on outside right now. It is your Friday morning. Uh, congratulations to those of you who have had a long week because uh, the week is coming to an end now, and you can enjoy a pretty nice weekend out there. Uh, some clouds out there, a little bit of coastal fog in some areas. Oceanside, Ramona, for example, but otherwise looking pretty good. Temperatures by the afternoon going to make their way to the upper 60s and low 70s. Jenny's checking up on traffic. Good morning. Good morning. So a couple of minor items out there. Let me start with one of the newer ones. This is on the 15 southbound side at Miramar. Uh, there's recovery work from an earlier crash and there's a stalled car to boot. 94 debris right on the eastbound side before you hit the 15 single lane blocked. Emergency repairs continue on Concepcion Avenue. So from Hamishaw over to San Francisco Street that is shut down both ways. And then finally Willow Glen there is a crash at Camino de las Piedras single lane is blocked. Back to you. Well, new this morning, a driver under arrest after crashing into two businesses in El Cajon. Yeah, this happened on East Main Street overnight and it was all caught on surveillance video here. News 8's Chris Groh is live at the scene where they're still cleaning up and you're learning new information here. Chris? Hey, good morning, Eric and Netta. This story continues to kind of keep twisting and turning, but let's start with the facts that we know of right now. One truck, two businesses. And this was the first one that was hit, the one that they're still working on right now, the one that sustained the most damage, the Precision Tune Auto Care here on Main Street. Now, take a look at the surveillance video because you'll see again that truck uh, then decide to, after hitting this Precision Auto Care, decide to go into reverse, go over the median and into a cash and carry business right across the street. And the reason why the driver under arrest at the very least, because we're told he took off from this scene and was then again later arrested. So at least potentially looking at a hit and run and maybe even more charges, depending on what exactly may have influenced this crash. And so uh, what was kind of also unique about this story is the fact that the owner of this auto care center was given the name by police officers of the man behind the wheel. And he says he recognized that name may have been a customer. So kind of a weird coincidence there as well, too. And really just kind of a, a shame for him because he's been dealing with a lot with uh, COVID-19. Not a lot of people on the road, so not a lot of people needing that service for their cars. But when he got that text notification, that, that notification from the alarm company, uh, kind of alerting him that something happened at his business around 11 o'clock at night. He, he's like, I just a false alarm. Turns out it wasn't. God, I was, it was bad. It was bad. We we're down 22%, but uh, past week it's picked up. Past week, two weeks it's picked up back to normal, and this thing happened. So hopefully they don't lock us down and we can still uh, maintain to take care of our customers. Yeah, so they're going to hope to take care of their customers here. And so you see that video again there, uh, that surveillance video showing this crash happening. Uh, and so uh, on top of the fact that he says, he look, he wants to remain open, try to help his customers out here. Uh, we are still waiting to see if the building is going to be OK, right? There's structural damage. And this same thing happened to this business two years ago without the structural damage. And he had to pay a lot of money after insurance and things like that. So again, looking at quite a bit of hit here to business. Eric Canetta. Uh, tough news for that business owner here this morning. Thanks, Chris, for the update. Despite a vaccine shortage here today, the Biden administration is announcing a vaccine milestone, meaning its goal of 100 million doses administered. 
More vaccines are on the way here to San Diego County. This is where supply still remains an issue. News 8's Allison Royal joining us live in Del Mar. That's actually a vaccination site that still will be closed again today because of those shortages. Hi, Allison. Good morning, Netta and Eric. Well, that's true. So the Biden administration is on track to reach its goal of 100 million vaccination doses today, but it will not necessarily be the same story here in Del Mar at the Del Mar Fairgrounds right behind me, where it will be closed both today and tomorrow, where once again, supply has just fallen short of demand, which has been an ongoing concern in San Diego County and historically here at this Del Mar Fairgrounds site. You know, we've been out here before talking about how appointments have been canceled and postponed. This comes after this site received or Pfizer doses than it initially expected. So if your point appointment might be impacted, I recommend that you check your email. The Superstation at Peco Park will also close, but this one permanently ahead of the Padres baseball season. That one has a previously closed here and there for short supply issues. County Supervisor Nathan Fletcher said more doses are coming 10% more next week than this week, and President Biden echoed his enthusiasm. And I'm proud to announce that tomorrow, 58 days into our administration, we will have met my goal of ministering 100 million shots to our fellow Americans. That's weeks ahead of schedule. And while some vaccination sites are closing here in San Diego County, other ones could be opening up. County Supervisor and Chairman Nathan Fletcher hinted at a possible site at the convention center in partnership with UCSD if supply allows. Netta and Eric. Allison, thanks for that. And here's how San Diego County's vaccine distribution numbers are looking here on this Friday morning. Over a million three hundred twenty six thousand doses have been given, according to the latest update. So that means just over twenty seven percent of people in our county have received one shot. Seventeen percent have been given both doses right now. Ninety two percent of the doses that the counties received have actually been administered. Local COVID cases now reaching two hundred sixty six thousand seven hundred fifty six over the past year. 439 new COVID cases to report here, as well as eight new deaths, bringing that total to 3,478 in our county, and there were no new COVID-related hospitalizations. President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris set to visit Atlanta today after a gunman killed eight people at spas in that area. Most of the victims were Asian women. The president and vice president will meet with Asian American leaders about the rise in anti-Asian attacks across the country. President Biden has ordered all U.S. flags to be flown at half staff to remember the victims. The House has now voted to open a pathway to citizenship for dreamers, immigrants who were brought to the U.S. illegally as children. This would offer lawful permanent resident status by earning a degree, completing at least two years of military service, or being employed for at least three years. An estimated 40,000 dreamers live right here in San Diego County. This legislation now goes on to the Senate. The House also passed a separate bill that would provide a path to citizenship for undocumented farm workers. Bring on the madness. Yes, March Madness has officially hit San Diego. Our number six seeded Aztecs will play their first NCAA tournament game in three years, taking on the 11th seed Syracuse Orange. Been a long time coming for this program that just barely missed a trip to the big dance last year. This week, the team actually took a photo sporting players' jerseys from last season, uh -huh. saying, we took a piece of you to Indy with us. There they are holding up those jerseys. Tip off at 640 tonight in Indianapolis, and you can catch the game right here on CBS 8. And Indianapolis getting ready to, they were housing 64 different teams in four hotels. Wow. But they're able to do it. They have been there. My brother lives there. They have big, big high-rise hotels. So they there can spread up the teams out and make sure it's done safely. Yeah, they're doing all the mm -hmm. testing and everything. So good to yeah. see them pulling off March Madness here. It'd be nice it. to see the fans back in the stands. Maybe next, yeah. next March Madness. Limited right? capacity. Some yep. will be there. So, <laughs> all right. How's it going, Evan? Uh, it's going good. Uh, I was just talking to our producer, Carla, and we we're saying how we're going to be checking in on the bald eagle camera at Big Bear. Get this. One of those eggs is starting to crack. Oh, it's Ooh. happening, guys. It's happening. <laughs> so this is downtown San Diego, but you want to stay with us. About a half hour from now, we're going to be checking in on that Big Bear camera. Those bald eagles getting ready to hatch. Okay, uh, here is the forecast for today. Upper 60s along the coast, 70s as you move farther inland. It looks like your mountains are going to warm up to the about upper 60s, so still a strong potential for snow melt to take place over the course of the weekend. Your deserts, boy, mid 80 degree high temperatures and plenty of sunlight all the way through. Now, the weekend forecast does show 
some changes in store. What I want you to keep in mind is that our potential for drizzle, our chance for showers is really minimal, about a 10 to 15% shot at it. However, we are going to be encountering a deeper marine layer. This is that symbol for fog there, meaning that through the morning hours, that marine layer is going to really push farther inland and thicken quite a bit. And then through the afternoon, we're expecting partly cloudy conditions, temperatures mostly in the low to mid 60s. Here's the view outside. We're just starting to get the beginning stages of that sunrise. It's going to happen at about 7 a.m. 653 to be specific. Uh, so still another 45 minutes or so on that, uh, but we're starting to see some of that light come through a little bit of haze out there and fog, but otherwise going to be a pretty fair day out there with temperatures uh, right at or slightly above average for this time of year. Jeff.